remember like when you had the first pick you always could get this like first two pick priority mm -hmm. then even third fourth pick you, you could get better like chances but mm -hmm. because there are so many heroes that can be counter that can be like even if it gets picked first there's no op heroes i mean you just saw game one right yeah, like, like that was straight countering but before like if you just open i bristle back Five you just win one lane <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the qo that's what it is like that's the qo strat we were looking over a few of uh, qo's replays and he's like oh, i carried so much on my no. own day gone it was so good it was so good and then oh. i just go look at our uh, febian forever Radiant and i'm just like i'm back. pretty sure carried on the eye of bristle back so unfortunately for these teams they can't run into that but now as we get ready for game number two draft something a little bit interesting i'd like to tell you matt mud golems got second uh mud golems chose radiant and navi chose second pick Marked by a Navi. The prize with Mod Golems. I don't Ten know why they pick Radiant, remain. but they probably have a plan. I mean, I still Five think the, the map remain. area that you can be playing in on Radiant is is better, right? Like, it's a bit safer to contest that top side. You can just give up that gigantic dead lane on the bottom side of the map. Always a pros and cons with both Radiant and Dire, but I just feel like these uh, top tier teams always prefer to play dire like they don't really care about first pick and second pick but i think all this og secret they pre they really really prefer dire well i want to see how they actually pick I i'm most keen to see what milan's hero is because one of the other advantages of the radiant side is that you can just walk up from that off lane and get a much easier pull through of the creep wave to between the tier one and tier two towers and you tend to do that with heroes that have high base movement speed or ones that you build boots on at the very start of the game so you know things like you know, Mirana could tiny. potentially come out again tiny no, although no, we don't really that. see too many uh, our, our spirit can do it as well yeah but like i think we don't really see this like a pulling way just because they don't want to give a free farm to carry <laughs> i feel like all these offlane plus like positive four players they really really want to harass this like carry and especially these mod golems i think 33 always gets this like a top priority and then he, whenever like no, when 33 gets his uh, hero and when he's first thing against any melee core for example their blood sticker i think the carry cs is like always like the two two third of like his normal cs yeah and we were talking about before you know roche is good but if you can't do anything with it it's not that great this time around mud golems they're going with a life stealer a hero that comes online super early so you're going to be able to pair that with another Five hero that Baronia likes remaining. to play that can get super active early into the you know 15 20 minute mark and if you're able to secure a kill on roche you can suddenly take away the entire top side of the dire jungle yep and really strong pickup for life stealer like you just even if you're versing ranger i don't think you can really harass this life stealer because of the surprising amount of regen that he do mm. every time he hits is that also to kind of uh, negate something like a mars to be coming out here mars is nothing if you're playing life stealer mm. so i i just don't really see many offlane here that can actually be life stealer like if it's an enigma it might be a bit different story because you can just with the lane Radiant without laning <laughs> <laughs> getting rid of those creeps yep the phoenix oh. So now, now we get there specially. Yeah. We talked about this was all, always want to fly last time we had the interview with him. He did say that they can pick Phoenix into any matchup they, they have and they don't really care because they just love playing around this hero and playing with this hero. I think that for them, it's like, he's like, Ten even in a losing matchup, we can get something out of it. And yeah. I think that's just talking about the late game specifically. Yep. That's something where the Phoenix really shines. At the end of the day, Lifesteal can only be invulnerable for that six seconds until he gets the talents. And as a strength hero, you're going to take a ton of damage from the Sunray as it gets later on. Yeah, and in the late phase as well, it's not offensive, but it's not defensive in the same time. Like mm -hmm. those fire spirit, actually, like the attack speed reduction is insane for level one. So you can always Ten get the better trade as long as Phoenix lands some fire spirit on the heroes. And five seconds. Remaining. The snapfire. We talked about this snapfire and Phoenix interaction. Like mm -hmm. whoever gets a level this like game phase like going, Radiant like if they if the map back. is on their favor, Drow snapfire wind. gets like better if yeah. phoenix is like in leading and phoenix gets better off mm. yeah. you would think that it's going to be lifestealer and snapfire laning together but the way that navi do it is it's their five phoenix is their five it's not a four so i was thinking if it's, this was a traditional matchup with phoenix being four Ten if you get that early level remaining. two phoenix is always going to go fire spirits level one mm -hmm. always so five you can suddenly get early remaining. level two get on top of him and get that early first blood Navi's not going to be the case this time around Radiant but for my golem's benefit like we were saying before Lifesteal doesn't care about Mars, so you're probably not going to get that great combination. And I want to see Navi ban it out themselves because I think it'd be a really good hero for 33 to pick up. Yeah, and this Draw Ranger pick up in second pick. I feel like Mod Golem 
has so many cards for 33. Mm. They and that's the reason why they can actually open with this life seller because 33's carry potential is just damn high compared to other offlaner. And he always pulls it off because and it's pretty risky if you run those sort of style. But I, I never see like 33, you know, were ever behind in this tournament. I, I believe his Visage game, the first game that he yes. played, was, yeah. was one of those games where 33 just really didn't uh, have the impact they were expecting. And to me, it felt like they were kind of just putting the Visage out there, just like, oh, if this if this carries and owns, then teams are gonna have to think about it. But then he defaulted back to something like a Void Spirit, and that's when he truly carried mm -hmm. from that offlane. And, and now you can just see Navi is starting to respect Ten it and get rid of all remaining. of 33's heroes. Lots of offlane heroes being removed from the pool. Doom, Beastmaster, Slider, Five all gone. Remaining. I don't know. I'm feeling the Mars for my golems i think yeah. it's a really good pick i really feel like they have to either ban it or or navi is considering this dry ranger offensive try lane i think that's more like higher priority as soon as they see mars they probably just send general to 1v1 Navi's mars and just go ban. offensive try lane no it's not that you want to pick it into a drow ranger say it man say it be not wrong it. well 33 max playing darkseer and that's a good way of getting in on top of a drow as a lifestealer, right? You just zoom him in, he pops his rage, and what can you really do as a drow range? You're just going to be food. Yeah. So whatever, like, offlane he picks, Five as long as if it's remaining. really bothering draw ranger, I really think Navi has to just swap the lane. Like, mm. what Sacred and, like, Liquid, they all do this with the range course, like, just start offensive try lane, try to make that wave uh, stuck into their side and just just continuously hold there and meanwhile like other two supports just continuously uh, uh, like stop the radiant to pull the creep mm -hmm. yeah so thinking about this next band here is Navi what are you thinking Matt fingers are tapping the cogs are turning I see something going on in your head right now I guess they're tossing Navi's up between the Mars and something like I mean do you really want to ban okay they're gonna get rid of the bat rider yeah uh, I was well, actually, I was nearly going to say Na'Vi might pick up the Batrider for themselves. You know, yes, you can just rage off any sort of uh, napalm that you get up, but it's a good way to lock down the Lifestealer. You're not going to have any sort of, like, the, the rage disable isn't going to stop you from being lassoed, which remaining. would have been nice. Um, Tango, Five maybe? For remaining. them, it, it provides a good amount of disruption. You can get it on the front lines. Uh, you know, disrupts enough to be able to get off a really nice egg. Disarm's good against the Lifestealer. It means that he has to be a bit more proactive with his rage before the Disarm hits onto him. The Minus Armor is good with the Drow because, you know, not an insane amount of armor, at least until you get into that armlet and a few other of these bigger items on the next. Yeah. Uh, I think they have to pick position five if Davi always runs Phoenix as four. No, they always no, run as five. five. Uh, yeah. So they have to pick up four here, I think. What's the Roger here? Oh, Mark. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. okay. They're just going to do it. They're just going to do it. Okay. They're going for team fight, They're trusting in their ability yeah. to get a lot out of, you would Navi's assume, general uh, in this lane. Unless I think they could be trying to change this up, right? Oh, Try and throw okay. the Mars into like a, a mid lane matchup scenario. Uh, I, I thought so. Mm. I think mid Mars can be really countered easily. Like, if it was last pick, I would be like, okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah. even if you get like, or, or this like early level six, if you just miss one spell, like you're Five just completely used to zero. Like, like and it's very risky for Mars to just rely on that factor. Tusker. I really I like, like this coming in from Tubby. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of damage coming out as well. I mean, picking Mars here is kind of just harkening back to your boy Collapse there, QO, where he just says, I feel confident on this hero. Give it to me. Yeah. Well, like, he's, bursting. he's either going to be bursting against Lifestealer or Bloodseeker. Really have fun time. No. Five no. seconds remaining. Even if they put this Draw Ranger, Tusker, and Phoenix bottom, which is really strong, mm -hmm, yeah. but if Mod Golem picks Snapfire plus one, like uh, another strong maybe like plus five heroes got crystal maiden mm. against this uh, maybe crystal maiden is too weak no i think they always run the snapfire as a five so mm. i would think that it's going to be milan's hero that's still yet to come uh, they don't have an insane amount of initiation so you don't want to put everything onto boronia uh, of course his storm spirit is amazing it's still in the pool you would think Radiant that navi are going to try and get rid of it just so that's removed Lina? and it's okay, a, no, okay. I mean, it's it's versatile, right? It can be in both that four and uh, mid lane roles. Yep. So you're not giving away everything about your draft just yet. So Navi's not going to have those super easy bans. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it provides some decent setup for things like a Blood Ride as well, if you're able to land Ten the stun. Yeah. Uh, like, 
They don't have many ways to open oh, the fight. Yeah, on Mod Golem. You, yeah, Mod Golem needs to either open it or Yule on Lina. I don't think cookie initiation is good no, at no, all. No, no, no. Yeah. They, they need either like a super aggressive support like a Nurse Spirit like we were talking about and run Lina mid, or you need to run the Lina 4 and something like the Storm Spirit coming through. 10 seconds remaining. I get rid of the Templar Assassin here, Mud Golems. Lean at me more towards something remaining. like a Storm Spirit. Don't want to go for that for Boronihar. He has been playing insanely well across the Storm. Entirety of Inner Warm Ship. We'll see I don't think Storm is a good of. pick for Mud Golem here, mm. so they'll probably ignore it. Why don't you think it's a good pick? I don't know. Like Draw Ranger, Mars, like there's so many annoying things, and Storm really don't want to buy BKB or Yule. Yeah. I know you, you can get it, but once you get it, it just feels really bad. So do you think this lean is mid lane, or do you think it's position four? Uh, position four. Okay. I think I think Bronia will pick his hero. My thing is, I feel like the reasoning behind my, my mm -hmm. mentality of the storm is that it's not only good for you, it's also the vehicle for the lifesteal, which yeah. I feel like Ten is needed. You know, if you can just get onto that back line, deal with... Honestly, you don't even need to hit the drought. You can Five kill the phoenix remaining. and you're going a huge way towards winning a lot of these teams. Surprise thing is like we didn't see Pock, right? Mm. We didn't see many Pocks coming out. Yeah, Liquid's probably been the team that's played it the most. I think they've picked it twice. Yeah, Boxy's played it as well as... Tiger. Tiger. Mm -hmm. Or can it be Zeus? Nah, not against Tusk. But I think Na'vi Na can pick Zeus, actually. To ban. Yeah, I, I, I think Zeus. Na'vi can. But, like, I would not want Mud Golems yeah. to pick it. They need initiation. They ban the Storm they themselves. The storm. Okay. Okay. Something not spicy here from the boys of Mud Golem. You guys want Na'vi to pick up the Zeus. They do have the last pick over all of the draft, so they can wait and see what Bora is going to pick up here. But remaining. what's the final ban going to be, lad? Something like... Wop? Ember? Or you can just, you can just ban Vicky and pick Evolver. Shadow Demon. Man. Okay. Shadow Demon. Okay. So kind of reducing the, the flexibility that Mud Golems can have. They wanted to go for like a Milan Shadow Demon. He has played extremely well in that uh, Shadow Demon already. What's right. he need? Mud Golem has to show first, like, is this Lina mid or off lane? Ten seconds remaining. Oh, man, I don't know what else they're going to go. Nah, like, Doom's out of the pool. Tiny's pick. still in the pool. It's a Wisp. Okay. Huh? All right. So right. it's Lina mid. Sure. Io five. Well, Milan Io. Mid snap. Maybe. Io Bloodseeker would be okay. I don't know. I'm confused. I'll be perfectly honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I Those actually words do not leave my mean. lips very often, <laughs> but I can't guess it here. How much reserve time five do they have? They've only got 20 mean. seconds all up left to make this final decision, and I'm sure that they were not expecting the Wisp coming out. Well, what's the Iceberg here? We want to see him on something that can provide a little bit more in this game here. Uh, fairly decent showing on the last track, but unfortunately just didn't get the victory. A couple seconds left oh, here. Let's see, TA. You know, TA's banned. Yeah. Oh, TA's banned. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh. 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 High five. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. my panelists, boys. My panelists are finally starting to get back in the good graces here. So, looking at both these drafts, we're just going to sit here and wait a second. So, it will be a Milan Io, and they're going to go yep. with a Bora Neha Lina. So, how are we feeling about these drafts, lads? We haven't really been on point the last couple of days when we've come to predicting, so let's see if we can clean it up a little bit. I feel like Davi's draft is better, mm -hmm. but I think I have to stick with Mod Golem. I, that's my inner feeling. Your gut? Here. Your gut feel? Yeah. Wait, does General have a new Mars set? I don't know. He Did Mars get a fancy. second set? But if Davi actually what? offensive trialing with the Draw Ranger, like that's a big factor here. I think they can just win this life steal the lane. So you think they're just gonna try and uh, go top. for a try lane? Yeah, you know, I just want to see that. Like honestly, because Draw Ranger is not gonna. Get I'm that worried much. about them starting fast on Mud Golem, so I'm gonna go with Navi. You're gonna go with Navi. What about you, Kua? I'll go with Mud Golem. Oh, you're going to go with Mud Golems here. So it looks like my panel split down the middle once again here. But we're going to head into game number two. We're going to leave it with our casters once again. It's going to be Odie Pixel and Fogged. Thank you very much. It's game two, Fogged. And what do you reckon uh, from what we've seen from these lineups? I uh, very straight did not expect the eye. I did not see that one coming at all. I thought they were going to do some type of flexible stuff, but not, not with this hero. This is... Yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely out of the box, and it's usually a pretty tough hero to make work. You are more of a newer team, which Mud Golems, they still have, you know, they're still getting their getting their combos and everything all together. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's pretty interesting. They have some Prepare very limited team battle. fight on their side, very limited ways to start fight. And I'm looking at Navi, and they've got their bread and butter. The combo yeah, that I did. saw them look You'll super dominant with better. at the beginning of this tournament. They're Mars and they're Phoenix. That's very true. I mean, th this game, there's... They've definitely got some heroes they can play around it, right? They they do have the snap yep. fire. The Belina, this is pretty fast, hard in hero, and of course uh, their carry is the is the life stealer, a hero that yep. that uh, doesn't care too much about the ultimates of these two heroes, uh, but still definite potential early on in the lane. Now we'll sit there to play around the rage, and as you say, it is something that we have seen Navi be very strong with. Uh, so we'll see how well they're, they're able to play it. Uh, but at the same time, Mug Golem seem to be pretty smart with what they're doing. And you've got to imagine that, 30 seconds you know, the, the, the things like the Mars and Phoenix, this wouldn't have necessarily surprised Mug Golems. They're, they're no. going to have things in mind and, and they're going to know how Na'Vi likes to play with these here. Yeah, and I, I think that there's a reason that they did all this. I think they like triple down or quadruple down even to ensure that this egg will never go off. They yeah. have the tether they, with the overcharge. Yeah. So that's double the attack speed. Yeah. Lena with fiery soul. Yeah. Snap fire with that thing and then life yeah. Stealer with his rage. So every single one of their heroes the should be able to hit egg in a lot of situations. That's at least what I, you know, what I thought of when they picked the IO. That and they can also dodge fights a lot. If you see a Mars and a Phoenix drop their ult, you maybe can relocate, save, and then you look for fights yourself and try to play around those cooldowns, because they're not very cool down the line on the side of my golems. And I'm looking at this, uh, this is actually an old dual lane. If people remember, I'm sure people do, from the horrifying times during their pubs, during the IO Bloodseeker era, when it was the 700 movement speed Bloodseeker and 700 movement speed IO, and you couldn't slow either of them. Mm -hmm. There was a time when this ran offlane almost every single game in high level pubs when it first got added. So I think this is another thing that they're looking to do because the mobility, especially for hero like Drow, it's Bloodseeker in the mid game is going to be moving at an insane pace to get on top of her. Now we'll see how well V2 and Roger are able to deal with this lane early on. I'm still, you know, Drow, pretty decent laner, right? You, you are going to have those Frost Arrows to punch in and with the tag team set up. So it's going to be some good damage, but. Of course, just that constant sustain and the fact that 33, he's always going to be ready to turn with a blood right if Roger does overcommit. So much, so much sustain, like you're mentioning. Between the two of them there, there's a thirst and then also the, just the tether heals. It might be able to just counteract the tag team every single time just because of those heals. But yeah, like you said, yeah, strong lane from the drow. It's just, they, I think they can play around it pretty nicly. High armor on Bloodseeker and then Io can always tether away. And then in the mid lane, Boroni is Luna against Dicebergs, Pugna. This sort of matchup, I mean, what you sort of expect from this, just pretty even. I mean, is, is there any kill potential for me with these heroes early on? I, pref I prefer the Lena in the matchup. I most of the time prefer Pugna, but this is one of those where it's Lena just always, you have two different forms of magical nukes. You have a sun as well, and you have high physical. You just have everything to deal with the Pugna. So I like I like Alina just slightly, maybe like 55. What a man. Skeeter. Oh, he was low, but he actually gets away with staying alive. Gets the first blood. He should fall. Yeah, General will actually find him at the end of it all. Uh, but not before he got the first blood. Nope. This death brings honor to one I suspect. Very nice. I'm yeah. able to get him pretty close to the tower and underneath it. And for that initial onset of damage. Look at the way that the safe lanes are. I'm speaking of safe lane top Roger top and is... Vitoon. Starting to get pushed away. This yeah, lane this, getting yeah, you, too strong. You're seeing the potential very early on for the Bloodseeker Io. The, the fact that they're able to just run at them like that, and and what sort of changes that from happening? I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a whole lot. Roger's two spells are, are not the greatest at holding them away, and the snowball, the, the, the safe that he does have, it's going to be able to dodge him from the blood right, but still just the chase the after it. Just so much damage. It, yeah, it just seems so much harder for Na'Vi to, to trade back with this. Absolutely, and 33, like we mentioned, he always has full sustain. This looks like an impossible lane for Na'Vi to win, actually, with these two. I think that... I think Vtune's gonna actually get pushed out of the wave soon. Right now, he at least has double range group pushing into him, so he'll get some XP, but yeah, he needs to be careful just not die at all times. And they're gonna go on him again up top. The blood rate connects. They may just dive this. I mean, they're, they're getting away with it. They're just going under the tower and killing him off. He doesn't even know he's shot in the right direction. He was... He was I, that, you only multi shot in the wrong direction when you tilted, and it, 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 I wouldn't blame him. Against these two in this lane, this is not a happy lane for the drought. You're, you're going to feel pretty annoyed with this. 
she's always gonna get ran down. I'm, I'm looking very concerned for this top one because they're gonna constantly harass the other lanesmen so that the thirst is kicked in and then tether increased movement speed. They're both moving 400 move speed. They're gonna get on top of her every time. I yeah, this is definitely concerning right now for this top lane for Navi. As life's still at bottom, Skeeter, he's still getting away with farm versus the Mars and the Phoenix. Yeah, Vtune. They're gonna just try to reset the lane positioning, but we didn't point this out either. Both teams heavily warding those safe lanes to make sure that there's no pullbacks, no side pulls, nothing cheeky. Yeah, everything been blocked. Yeah. Milan makes a move away from top. That's when 33 starts to get zoned. But he's looking to set up on mid. Iceberg. Comes in with a tether. Bit of punch on the wise back. I spoke Scott is south though, so he's good to go. Coming up to those five minute bounty runes, he will be able to make sure that he's refueling himself down there. Radiant structure. Yeah, Milan, he did refill fortified. himself and now he's going back toward top Dyer's so they can middle tower continue this pressure attack. to Vtune. Vtune got a little bit of space there to get some last hits. He's up to 12 now because of the move from Milan. Not Still a very tough time. play for him though. Whatever they do get aggro, he has to just be very careful. 290 move speed, just can't get away. And look at Borinia's positioning. You, know, you were talking about those five-minute bounty runes. He oh, actually he's pushing it. wave in, and he's taking it aggressively. Love very it. Very smart. Money to burn. They actually might get all four bounty runes. Because, well. Yeah, they're going to get all four. That's huge. There's yeah, some, some early gold leak coming out from Muck Golems this game. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Grab all those and phase boots on Skeeter. So now that bottom lane, the times when General and always want to fly could have looked to get aggressive on Life Seer. That you know it's starting to go away already. He's got this increased armor, increased movement speed. Much going to be much harder for General to take advantage of this this hero now. Top, Top not yeah, getting any easier games. for Navi. I mean, to now able to find a little, you know, a bit of farm. He's, he's at the bottom, but he's got something. He's got his boots now, at least, so he can actually avoid the blood, right? Still only 335 move speed. Like, still very, very, very difficult for him to actually get away from them. And look at the turn. But this, this is not an easy, this yeah, is not easy that, to turn on. This yeah, you heals. can't turn on this. you got to start running. As soon as he's in with the snowball and just 33 full HP after that. It, 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 these sort of moves just don't do anything to the Bloodseeker. And look, at, and look at V-Tune. He tanks one spell down to half health. Has to get salved up 33. Like you said, he's always just always just chilling. Always more than enough sustain. And he's pushing the lane in pretty hard here. The catapult is going to be going down here. So they're going to have a catapult pushing in up here top. Mid lane. Very good. Pretty much exactly even actually with this wave coming in. Yep. Continue to be free farm for both of the mids. They push it back and forth. Bottom lane, skid up. Cookie set up. He's not always going to fly. Straight away with a TP out. Ooh, he'll only just make it, but he does. Ooh. I, well, I love that Fado went for early shredder. Just going to point out. I think I see that every game versus, uh, when I see snap fires. Whenever I see the two point in Cookie, you, sure, it's great in the lane, but little shredder is insane. You know, it, it's minus six armor. Put in a blightstone. Minus eight armor on the target you're hitting. And mid game, well, as soon as you have six, you will be able to kill that egg. You don't have to wait for your level seven, level eight. We're seeing this now in the top lane as well. Is it getting to the point where you just can't, can't really go to lane? Yeah, V2 yeah. did. We saw there just having to TP out Dyer's as they moved in on him. Still at a stage top. where, you know, 33 hasn't even got the level six of the rupture. Uh, they are going to have nice Iceberg move. head over here. Yeah, I like this. 33 checks the side camp. It's still blocked by the sentry. There's wasn't able to counter it. Milan looks like he might go down here. The raindrop actually saves him. He's away. He's away. He's going to be fine. Iceberg trying still to push chasing. in forward. Yeah. is over here, though. I was going to say, Iceberg, there's no way okay. he can move any further in on this one. Iceberg's got to let this one go. Radiant are scanning. Been up still. into this spot, part of the map. Similar to last game, though, they push V2 out of his safe lane. And now he has to go farm the mid, just like the last time. He's not a level 4 PL this time around, but still definitely getting slowed down. Mm, Around the rooms, fight it. He's able to grab the bottom one. Regen. I don't think he gets some sort of catch on mid, but scan up last now. Over the reach, Iceberg. He's going to step back. She sets back the range off the light strike array. They've got the stun. If they got the damage with the Laguna, they certainly do. <laughs> Just getting in a little too close, and Barney are very quick with that opportunity. As soon as he sees him step forward, catching him just on the edge of that light strike array. Very nice turn from the leader. 
instant turn. Yeah. yeah. That was perfectly done. And up to 2k gold lead. Back up to top. They see Roger trying to farm. They're going to try to pressure him a bit there. Maybe even like going under the tower a little bit here too. 33 looks like he wanted to chase. Milan looks like he didn't. And between, he's going to just have to jungle. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that mid lane proving to not be a safe place either. It's top. 33's got the rupture. Drops it down on a Roger. Roger will manage to save himself with the snowball off the, the side. He's already. That's uh, going to do Fought the damage. Six. Oh late. my god. Fought at six before nine minutes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, more I, two. Iceberg is fortunate that to get away with his top. life there too. Like, that's... Pugna this early on into a into a snapfire is also a very free kill with any type of disable. Yeah, I mean, he's the same level as V2. Yeah, I can't believe how fast he's six. That's insane. I guess because of how bottom happened. I, I don't know. And there's the rotation mid fodder. I, I yeah, insane. must that kill miss mid must have really done it. Because you're right. It, it's, it's under, it's this is an insane amount of XP from Zap. Roger's gonna TP into this top lane. Roger might just die. He's gonna need some backup and back fizz up on the way. Bring a lot. See if they can get some kills in now as they look towards Milan. Now, should be able to find this. Actually, out to the side with a big tether. He's away. Fada will get left behind, but Fada tries to tell with the scatter blast. He's a oh. be able to bring down Roger with him. He'll take that. And the hop, pretty much what four members of Navi turn up to push them back. Well, they kill Fada, but not without Fada taking down one of their own. He almost got the experience for the kill too there. They're, them taking so long to kill him. But yeah, having to bring four heroes to punish a snap fire. The five position Radiance who's pressuring your safe lane so hard. Vtune. Skeeter's actually setting up with a very clever oh. position here. And they got the stun. Ooh, oh, not quite able to get there in time. That was I, that was heads up. I like that from Skeeter. Wow. He actually went in, checked the ancients, he saw that they're stacked, and then he hides himself behind a tree, baiting VTune for the DD. Smart plays coming out from Mud Golems, and again, just like last game, they're up to almost a 4k gold lead after this, this laning start. But this team definitely a team to watch, uh, I think. I mean, it should come to a surprise to some people because of the, the caliber of players they do Dyer's have on the squad, but already attack. showing just in, in the Dyer's series we've had so far in this early stage of the tournament. Some very impressive showings. So top lane, 33 is able to get the blood right off in time. Iceberg's moving up at Milan, but the relocate's there. Wow. Probably gonna be in a bit of problems himself as they don't have a stun. He can just tether can away. Tether again? I think so. Spears on cooldown for two seconds. Will he be able to get the timing? He is. He's able to get. Oh, does still get trapped on the arena. The spears off the mark, but they should have the burst. And they slowly, but surely will. Again, it's four heroes of Navi you're seeing come in, uh, and it is just a support dying. So. Uh, another instance where it attack. just feels like Na'Vi, they're having to use so much to achieve so little, really, as they just continue to fall further behind in gold. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, they, like you said, they get the kill, but it's on yeah. it's on the IO, Radiant so whatever. And in the meantime, Skeeter takes bottom tower. Morning Head does majority of damage to mid tower, and they get into the ancient side of the drone. I'll put a sentry to block Dyer's and a, a very clever ward that attack. I don't, that's not going to get dewarded. That ward's going to stay there, and it's going to be able to give vision of this entire triangle. I've never seen that ward. That's a nice one. That one avoids yeah, most yeah, of the uh, regular sentry spots by yeah, a good margin. You're just not, you're not going to check sort of that far north, and if you do, you're checking over to the cliff on the east. Yeah. yeah. Over in the river. Always one of the flies. Oh, oh no, they've got the damage. Oh, got the damage the attack to be to take it out in time. As for tries to turn the life drain onto Baronia, they'll roll him with a snowball onto Fada. Fada, he's still alive here. Finally will fall as he gets burst down. Skidder also low, but he's able to turn with the face towards Roger. Roger keeps himself safe with the shards. Peter's still trying to chase in. Not quite close to the gap, but recap. Speed it in. And damn, rupture as well, Roger. Dead here. Gonna buy a bit of time with the snowball. And if anything, just rolls himself over to allow Skeeter to be the one to claim the kill. And Skeeter will be very happy with that. under attack. Again, just they're always setting themselves up for so much. Look, and, and, like they're always, I think they're getting so much on the map. Burning his coming. Milan, the IO is hitting the top tower, getting it down pretty low. All three yeah. tier ones are about to go down. That mid and that top are going to go down really soon here for the side of Na'Vi. Yeah, so just they have to. Three yeah. of Na'Vi's cores are uh, falling behind. Bar Bar Nia, he's, he's so close to having Yules and bots at this point, and 2k ahead Radiant any core on Na'Vi's team. He's level 12. Oh my, almost level 13 even. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. 
some pretty uh, insane one shots. You what? know, Drow Ranger, not Top. the tankiest hero. Come and get the last two on the tech. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Always want to fly able to find it with the deny. Try for they some setup here. Fada's trying to, to do something. A little tricky to close in on the, the Phoenix with the dive. Oh. They were able to get the D wards here. Roger did actually end up finding that northern observer ward around the triangle. And they secure it for Vtune to try to get some farm. But yeah, like we said, Vtune only level 9, burning in now 13. So this Laguna Blade is also going to shred it through this low level Pugnanch, low level Drow Radiance quite middle easily. Tower is under attack. Just so damn farm. And they're continuing to grow that lead almost up to 6k. Navi, they gotta start looking to do something here with their margin of Phoenix. General is gonna drop the arena, but it was a spit misses. And Fox just able to jump out of it. And now General, oh no! It'll be okay, but uh oh. I think now Mugholms, they're gonna look to push this mid tower pretty hard here. No No Marzolt can probably look to commit into it here and look for some dive plays. Navi's gotta bring everybody. Skeeter is connecting. He's coming in with this wrap round straight away, but he has he been caught it. by the size of the sun. He's in trouble. He's getting locked there, able to take him out. A little bit too much of an over aggressive gank there from Skeeter as he tries to swing him from the back. Navi's prepared. Kisses are going to come into play. Still trying to fight on forward. Snowball almost certainly put him in a dangerous place here, Roger, as he rolls straight into the midst of the four of them. Held your feet to the fire. I don't need that. They get themselves something at least, though. Uh, Skeeter yes. playing over aggressive. Oh, no. Uh oh. The last with Laguna up. He certainly does. So much Dead Phoenix. Blood. And now they can go right back and take the mid tower. So Navi, they did a good that job holding, but it will inevitably go down. So at least they get the big kill on Skeeter, who we see the itemization. He's playing versus Drow Ranger. Full Dyer's plus armor. Armlet already giving you plus armor. Now a plate mail. He'll be strong Dyer's versus that drought at all stages because of this. Very nice to scan. I mean, even against the extra little bits of physical burst from, from the tusk with his punch, or the mark yeah. with his rebuke. That armor to, to make it very hard, really, for, for Nami to kill him. Even though, even though we obviously attack. did see them be able to do so just then, but I'm sure we won't see Skeeter try for that much of an ambitious, uh, ambitious move again. He's at 33 armor attack. when he has his armlet active. Yeah. That's, I mean, 16 minutes in. That, that's that's uh, some of the higher armor. armor you're going to be seeing it hit on a hero. Yeah, um, this is one of the better heroes versus Drow Ranger because of that. It's a yeah. weird, you know, Drow is good versus Lifestealer for the most part because just the mat nature of the matchup, but the itemization you go on Lifestealer is just good versus Drow like this. See, Navi, all together. I like that they're playing together here. They have Blink on General, so they're very strong right now. You can get the catch on Fada. There we go, he's looking for it. Not far up. Got the snowball. Oh. Bottom he's under attack. I land with the save. And now there's the rest of Mud Golems turning up. The Kanavi still take this. They're trying to set up for the fight. They got the ward down. Let's see what they can do. They're going to kill it off. And they try and get on top of Milan. Supernova's out of the side. Skeeter's going to go straight towards him with the edge. He's popped the range, takes down the edge. The arena does track 33. 33 is still alive though. Jump forward with the cookie. Fana stuns up Roger. Skeeter moves over towards the task. He's three dead. Maybe even four. The Yules combo lands down onto General. They kill Milan, but it costs them so much. Four dead on Na'Vi. As it's, it's, it's just sort of a similar story to the fights that we saw in game one where Na'Vi, they, they begin to fall behind and then it just, it, it costs them so much to get the smallest of kills, you know, it's just the IO going down and four heroes losing their lives in the process of it. As soon as they don't Dyer's get Fada to start it off and he's able to disengage, it already it looks rough. And the things that we talked about early on, how Mud Golems, they drafted themselves in this way that Ag is always going to die, it's working. It's... Like Fada there, he pops his little Shredder, kills the Nether Ward before the fight starts, so they take no damage from that. And then they have, you know, the Life Stealer and the Lina easily able to focus that one down with the rest of them just sitting inside the Marzol. Again, Mud Golems continuing to impress and not slowing down, looking for another fight. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And uh, Navi, it, it feels like they don't need them here as Mud Golems just seem to be General. too prepared. He's, he's got the blink, so he's he, he got up one hit. Poking around on the side of them. I mean, Arena's up in a few seconds. Let's see if Navi do want to try it. Another shot at having a Ooh. team fight. Nice, he stole the big dragon there, General. Nicely done. 
You see the way Mud Golems is playing though. Immediately just charging toward that triangle area when there's no Mars ult, there's no Phoenix ult, they know how much stronger they are, even walking into those riskier positions. They set up for a smoke, they've, they've got one on Roger. The ult's up, they're gonna get in another shot. Look for the team fight that they're just not being able to come out with oh. successfully. It's, it's, maybe they can find the Lina. Boronir would be a perfect grab. They're gonna, okay, they're gonna go for the Roche attempt. Now, is this gonna get scouted out at all? It's pretty quickly done here by Na'Vi. Oh, is he gonna... He's heading over. Is he gonna get it soon enough? Hey, it's going low, he's gonna have to jump in if he wants to, but it's already down. Get themselves... Oh, Beach, Beach and he stuck around! He tried to TP out in the midst of it, or finally goes in with a cookie, they will be able to save him though. Snow no, 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 no. it actually did get them up to the high ground. Beach, he will live still. Roger's gonna be left behind. Chase for more here, the relocate coming in from Milan, bringing in Skeeter from the side. He's over onto the drought. Beachu's down, Iceberg trying to stand his ground and take down Milan with a life drag, but he hasn't got the damage. The Laguna's there, and it's all. Oh, it couldn't have gone any worse for Na'Vi. They get Roche, they get the Aegis. But Vichu's uh, decision there to, to sort of instantly TP out of the, 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 the Roshan pit and, and try and get himself somewhere quickly on the map had just cost them everything. As Farda, he, he's in, he's in, he puts it to a stop. And then just as soon as they get the Aegis, they have it taken away from them. And now they lose all four bounty runes, two off of all of it. And oh, this game feels rough. Very impossible. And with their Mars and their Phoenix, they're not able to get the setup for the team fights. No, and the setup from, uh, oh, maybe yeah. him. They have got him in the arena. Supernova's out. And he's able to move inside Supernova Stone with a clip him. No, he's out of range of it. It but just no, we don't lose anyone. It just came from the courier. That would have been such a big kill for them. Oh, he gets it delivered as well as the Lotus Sword bailout from 33. Warning here. Can't even get punished for his over aggressive over aggressiveness there. He's a level 18 almost on lead at 12k net worth. That would yeah, I mean that would have been a real nice comeback for them there. I mean, it would have been a bit of a comeback. A bit of a comeback, yeah, fair enough. Uh, uh, fair just enough. a little bit of a comeback. They, they, they need a few more of those to, to make a, a complete comeback. It could have snowballed, though, you know, some chain kills. It's always a possibility, but Navi all Dyer's kind of running together, your hands held. Attack. And it feels like Mud Golems, they know exactly where they're standing right now. Skeeter, he's just hitting on the tower with his team Dyer's all at the ready around him. Radiant structures are fortified. How's it, AC? Look, he's got it done, right? He's got it it's, done. It's on the car. It's 21 minutes in. AC complete. The squad. Navi. You get a jump here, General. Looking, but it's just so hard to commit. He knows that each time Milan is going to be waiting in the shadows, quite literally. He's got the amulets. Ain't hidden and ready to jump in with tethers and saves when needed. Well, we'll turn to the side. Baron is going to commit. Combat's always want to fly. Puts the BKB so he can with the Laguna, but it's not enough damage. Always want to fly. Is he able to get away? And Baron here taking a bit of a punch from Pichu. Baron goes in so he can land the stuff on the Jabal. There's a snowball coming in onto Baron here, but this Lina's not dying. He's still alive. He is able to live. The burst seal's there for the invest. He's not going to go down. Navi's going to lose three. I mean, Baron here just playing it so smooth there, closing the gap on the Drow whilst Dyer's at such low HP. Up. He has to attack. take off that passive, land the stun, and with those sort of maneuvers, he keeps himself alive. He keeps his cool, and, and Navi can't even kill him. Dyer's top nah, top un is under unbelievable. <laughs> Actually, unbelievable. Everything just to bail him out and save him, too. The little things, the max, the sticks. Just all this plus armor, too, Dyer's like we said, like the AC, all these things fallen. to kick in. The medallion Dyer's thrown on him too, any of these plus armors. Yeah, Mud Golems, they came with such a good plan. Itemization on point, 20 to six. Feels like Navi just stands no chance. Yeah, I mean, the, the game won. to go out of the sort of 41 minutes. Uh, you know, they're able to draw it out a bit against the Spectre, but this time round, Mud Golems, they, they're just taking a, taking a quite a lead at a much faster pace. And uh, I'm with heroes that are going to be much more geared up to closing it up soon if, if Na'Vi's not able to pull out some sort of magic to turn this. Hey, this time they don't even have Etoon, you know, this PL at the top Ranger. of the charts or anything. It's yeah. a Drow Ranger, 0, 3, and 1. And he's sitting in the trees. Net worth. And he's sitting in the trees, he can't even play. He's got it. It's so scary the map right now. 
Immediately they run up aggressive, still no Marzol. It comes back up right now, but that's the target they find as well. He's got the Yule to dodge the combo. So he'll let Skittles thinking about diving past the tier 2 tower, but he'll hold back on that now with the jump for general. Okay. He's able to get the spear down onto Skittles. Skittles getting on. Can they finish it off? They've got the silence. Skittles being focused with the save. Milan comes over with the heal. Skittles not going to go down. Turns over towards Iceberg for the open wounds. Now a look towards General Laguna in to play. General cannot blink out. As Skeeter lives, they just can't kill him even when it looks like he would be dead for sure. Nice shards play from Roger, pushing him down to the low ground, but the balls, ooh, not enough to kill him. He's going to make it out. Nice. Very, very nice little shard dodge there, pushing him down and out to safety. Uh, but still, the the lead grows for Mud Golem's 14k advantage. And we're seeing back to back now, both cores in positions where they get so low, but Na'Vi can't quite finish the kills. And we're definitely seeing the reasons to the IO. These saves from Milan have been absolutely ridiculous all game. And it's always versus that combo. So they are trying to play around those Okies. That Mars plus that Phoenix with the relocates. And also just his, his positioning. These mech heals as well. Just time and time again. Yeah, it makes sense why they would class pick an IO for this guy. Under attack. Milan pretty good at it. Pretty good at his uh, specialist of the heroes. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, he always has been. I mean, it Anytime you sort of see a team that that uh, got the old IO player getting in as fifth pick, you know that there's going to be some struggles down the line for the enemy, uh, and we're we're seeing it here. And maybe this game will be a bit of a reminder to the other teams that will go ahead to face Mug Golems that that IO you, you can't forget about it uh, when you're playing against Milan. No, definitely not. They're just they're looking so hot. They're playing Radiant super well scanning. together. Navi, they're smoked up, trying to set up something around the bounty runes, but. It's just going to be time wasted for the most of them all. I, I feel like that line drawn by 33 is like that's the only place that they should be able to play in the game as Navi. As Mud Golems. Looking to keep constricting them inside the base, 33. Pushing them away. Iceberg's trying to pressure down bottom, but not going to be able to do much of anything and it's it's very rare you see a team with Pugna have almost no building damage in a game that's how well Mud Golems is playing they're not even letting them hit the buildings we go general Dyer's top tower is managed to get the spare in play Morning on that BKB for now Baron here but now he's able to self you Roger stepping forward but the BKB's out Baron here they turn they take down the tusk the rest of the Navi have to run chases on here from Mud Golems it's 33 and Baron here zooming forward He's got the urn down, blood right as well as Na'Vi continue to get forced oh, back. Oh, Vitu He's closing in on Vitu. Vitu's outside of the base. Hurricane Pike on cooldown for 10 seconds. Well, actually relocate back out of there. Not wanting to come any further with the buyback from Roger. They'll respect it and get the space to Na'Vi. Again, just Na'Vi, they, they keep trying his commitment. Barnia. Yeah. Find Barnia. Another save. Milan's over with the tether. They do manage to spin Milan. A little bit of war can burst him. They do manage to kill the Aya. The IO is down. Now, what more can they get? Na'Vi need much more than the IO kill right now. That was a huge cookie by Fada. Morning, I think he was going to get speared, actually, to the wall. But the cookie bounces him over, and Milan ends up actually in front of it. And he catches the spear. That was very quick save from Fada. They may have lost... I'm pretty sure they would have lost Alina there. Super quick play as Navi. They're, they're trying to fight back, trying to secure this triangle. So Vtune has a home. They need it to happen quite a lot more. They need to get the bigger targets. They just keep killing the supports. They can't kill these cores. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Eight and zero on Boraning here. I think four zero on thirty three. They're just yep. unable to really find these cores too often. Dyer are scanning. And it's, it's just it's not a game where it's going to get any easier for Na'Vi's heroes. They're attack. all about no. these sort of mid-game fights, the jumps, the bursts, and they, they've just not managed to make it happen with the lead that Mug Goblins have managed to build up very early on this in this game. You know, straight away from the lanes, Mug Goblins had an edge, and now getting a bigger 13k up. KBAC done on Skeeter. Go the route of the Nullifier next. Oh, he's actually unkillable. He has BKB finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that can kill him, the only thing that could kill him before was if he was silenced and he can't actually get the rage up. Now he'll always have either BKB or rage in the fights. So it's an egg. Never gonna get off. Always wanna fly. They're always gonna be able to hit that one freely. Now he shouldn't. We should see Skeeter, who's the only core with any deaths. We should him not be afraid at all anymore. Roger. 
not a lot he can do it. Into the snowball he goes, rolling over. 33's blood right clips him on the way out. Oh, nice neutral. Nice neutral. Nice neutral items that they got on the side of uh, got the muggles. Telescope on 33, and then the repair kit on Milan. That HP region on IO is oh, yeah, pretty sad. nuts. Yeah. Uh, anything to stop it at this game. Uh, didn't, didn't go for any sort of vessel. Uh, I mean, no. is, does that sort of surprise you, or is, is it just the nature of the fact that they're, they're they're just not really getting gold for that sort of stuff that they have to prioritize other items against the Aya? Yeah, I, I think they're just they've been too far on the back foot the entire of the game. It's, too, yeah. it's such an expensive item, and they wouldn't even have charges for it most of the time. They're not getting killed. That's, that, that's true. Attack. That is true. Radiant structures are. That may be the logic there. Ooh, they might get their tap first tower here, Navi. They're trying to set up for it. It might get denied by 33. And Iceberg, he has to be very careful of his positioning. Oh, he's got to hide. He's out with the TP. He's probably here. Would I find him? No, not quite in time. Iceberg makes it away. Almost get the tower, at least, though. So a little bit of injection of cash. If it, if it does go down, it's down to 50 HP. Always want to fly. Is he going to sneak? Radiance Always want to fly sneaking the tower bottom. Yeah, Look at him go. Get that money. Uh -oh. so coming gone. in with a relocate, but he is well and truly away. Nothing Milan can do to stop that. Nicely done. And then they'll take every little Dyer's bit of gold they can get right now, Narvi. Yep. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. They just have to hope Illusion. for a type of incredible high ground defenses, really. Fighting outside of the base is impossible for them. They have to have Drow sitting miles away from Skeeter. Money to burn. For the twins. But yeah, Mud Golems, they're just going to play the farm game and just chill out anyway then, if that's the case. If, if Navi wants to play in the base, look, look at the way Borning has itemized this game. BKB, MKB, oh, and he's got a Satanic Cube. Skeeter is... He's, uh, he's, he's going to hold back on that one. A little too far even for him, even with the Aegis. No need to try and rush high ground as such. No, they've got the lanes pushing in, Fodder's forcing in bottom as well. They've got mid pushed in with the Catapult. They can look to Siege. Can Navi hold? Trying to keep the creep wave. Dire structures are fortified. Even if he's all buffed up, he still has to give respect to the drow. I think he's sitting at like 50 something armor when he's gotten gets the solo crest and everything I thrown mean, onto him. Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing you say that, but I was saying, you know, those procs come in and they don't do a lot. No. Are heavily mitigated by this the high armor values that you throw up. But yeah, my golems, they, they've got many routes out of this game. Chill, wait for Skidder to get his next big item on. And yeah, just continuing to stay far ahead of the whole game. Look how they Amazing. actually they do this too. They don't actually send, they don't teleport a hero back. They run a hero back with Milan in case a fight kicks off, they can just free low him in. So even then, they're, you know, even though they're so far ahead, they're doing the little moves that are so important in these type of games. Navi, they're there on another hunt. They're out with the smoke. And they catch now these making two. the pings up to top. Can they burst these here? I mean, it, it, it's all down to General jumping in and getting a spear, really. Instantly start things up, but even then, saves are available. Maybe they can burst Milan. They're going to focus towards him. See what they can get done here. Milan, buying time for himself with the Ghost Scepter and the Glimmer. They still surround him, dropping the arena. They want that IO dead. They'll get it. Can they Everything. get away without losing anyone, though? Trying to get out for any. What's he able to find with the stun? He's able to cancel the TP. Always want to fly. Roger. Out the side of the snowball. Uh, he'll also fall there. He's always want to fly. And Roger go down. The rest of Navi do get out. But it, again, it's into one of those moves that they've had so many times. Navi, they're, they're killing the supports, but they cannot do anything else whilst they're this far behind. They can't take out these cores, and it's always mud golems. Like, they read the play. They know that that's the best move that Navi can make. Already setting themselves up and sending their heroes top to meet. General. Up top, general. Coming for this one. The egg's going to be popped down deep. Step aside, wait it out. Mud golems is happy seeing that. Egg on cooldown now. World is their oyster. They can back up and reset. I always respawn too. And yeah, he's just going to TP in. He's also going to fill Borny his bottle as well, just to give him a little bit more mana. And Roger leaves. Or I'm sure he'll be back for the final hold. They have just spent some big money, Na'Vi. Well, we do have Iceberg. He just bought a complete Hex. 
Okay. Wow. He's been, he was saving gold for a long time. I see Drow also, I believe, finished up the Daedalus. So, okay. okay. So, we've got some items. Some items that weren't there oh, before. Not the Daedalus. Sorry. He actually bought an Eagle Song instead of finishing the Daedalus. All right. I mean, there's no true strike on these carries. Uh, well, I said no. Sorry. There is on Boromir. But there, there isn't on the, the Lifestealer and Bloodseeker. Uh, but, as, yeah, as you're probably. Yeah. The, yeah. the Lena, the, just, Lena's, yeah. the Lena's gonna yeah. kill you on on her own. It doesn't matter that the rest don't have the true strike. If Boronir gets gets in range, uh, he's he's easily got the damage to take the Drow down on his. Own. Yeah, I'm actually so, curious to see. I guess he's like because the Lifesteer doesn't have it. He wanted to go for this type of item and all that. But I mean, honestly, Eagle uh, would, wouldn't uh, E Blade be better? Well, I guess it's something. I mean, yeah, the, so the, butter, the butterfly feels kind of meh. It feels meh. It, it feels like, honestly, it feels like he needs rapier or Daedalus. Or just like, it actually just feels like he needs rapier this game. Because they need actually, just yeah, dude, straight yeah, just, damage. Dude, he's just got rapier and just sit back and fire out the motor shots. That would have been a, a way to do it. Yeah, you're just about to hit 20 to the motor shot damage. It's just a hard game for him. I'm sure he's just, he doesn't know what to get at this point. The rest of his team, no, it's, it's, it's not like he can do it by himself, right? Like the Pug and the Mars is just too far out of it. Their supports are so under farmed as well in comparison. There's no one item that will really do it for him. I was like, even if, like, 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 he's so squishy, too. Like, a Blood Rage and a Laguna, like, and he's almost dead, too. There's so many different things that Mud Golem have going for them. And they're going to just continue this pressure. There's no egg, so 80 seconds where Navi's going to have a very hard time holding if Mud Golem just commits. Right. Milan. Milan needs a moment, I think, too. Second, what's going on here? He's got to stretch, you know, crack his back a little bit from carrying his team with all these reload kits. Well, I tell you what, what's the win percent look at this game? It's, 98. Yeah, it's probably When we saw high. that last time round, it was uh, pretty bang on. The game closed up moments after. Let's see. Let's see what Na'Vi, if they can somehow swing this one around. Looking pretty tough. Scan. 25 to 9, 20,000. The lead here for a golem. Then let's see. No egg. They're stalling. Beating Skeeter up. Gets his infest off onto the creep though. Keeps the ages. Top the, uh, top tower top will be finished top. off the bottom. That also is Fada's Aghanims coming out on the courier, so they will have the uh, beautiful gobble up as well inside these middle of these team fights. And Aegis reclaimed. Mud Golems looks like they're going to give respect to Navi. That high ground defense is still very strong. Oh, there it is. Gobble up ready. All right, just fire him in. Fire, fire Skitter. Fire him the, in. Here we go. At the drop. Hey. Oh. He got him. Connects. He connects. He got him with the sun. He's in on him. I mean, I don't know. What well, the kiss is? Yeah, v 2 has got to get back to the base. Roger's going to get caught by the blood ride. v 2 is actually going to go gone. down. No, no he's just able to walk in and drop a Laguna on him. Oh, well, that, that might be that. Dyer's top racks. Dead Dread out for a minute. Top, top rack's taken out. And yeah, the, as soon as the axe is up, he sends them in. And uh, it may have just closed it up. I had hoped for the invest into the top, you know, two heroes in. Oh, but yeah, the double. To. If he oh, gets eggs, they can do the triple as well, by the way. He can eat one, and then he can also jump inside of somebody, and then they can shoot them in. Oh, Jenna, oh, it's a good amount of reach. Here we go. Super yeah, over good off to the side. Snowball across as well. This is an amazing start for Na'Vi. Have they got the damage, though? Nobody is dying apart from one. Okay, that's a lie. 33 does fall. It's the humiliation. But it takes everything, and uh, as we can see, Mud Golems is still more than happy to turn and fight. Skid is running in, does get X. He won't quite die on will he? Homer lands in with the tether. The land keeping him alive. Actually goes for the towers. Coronia yeah. sweeps in, picks up the triple. I think if you're Coronia though, this actually could be a bit of a comeback. The reload. The spear. Ooh, as you say, he's, he's immediately out. Immediately out, but Milan probably going to die here. Look at Borning here though. They, they, they drop the cheese, they give Milan the cheese. Borning here, team needs to commit to give him a tether target. All and he right. actually gets gobbled up. That actually works. He gobbled him up on the re relocate and it doesn't that bring doesn't it back. work. It worked. No. I just saw it. Wait, what? He gobbled him up and he doesn't get re relocated. Wait, what? Excuse me. 
Interesting. Mechanics, Interesting. ladies and gentlemen. Does anything else in the game stop that, folks? Does anything else stop a re relocate? Maybe if a lifestealer eats him too at the infest, or a pudge with agonim if he eats them with this member. I think maybe those all would work if that's the case, right? Because they're all the same mechanic. Well, I, well, it's interesting, right? Because you'd imagine what that would sort of count for the sense that they're out of the game. But things like, obviously, OD's Astral, that doesn't stop it, but... Well, because they're in the nether. This technically literally removes them, I guess, t literally removes them from the game. Interesting. Wow. I mean, I learned something new. Yeah. I also saw him use the gobble up to dodge the Phoenix egg stun on the IO too, by the way. He ate them, I ate, he ate him, egg popped, and then he tossed them out as well too. So, some good stuff from Pada here. And teaching us. Very nice. I, I wonder if they knew that mechanic too, because they all started chat wheeling immediately afterwards too. So it looks like it was like, hey, let's try this. And then it worked. And you're like, oh. Oh, Notice General. It. Ooh, that bling though. Goes away. Gobbled up, tossed it. Didn't quite find them. The mud golems continue pressure. b trying so hard to finish up his butterfly. He's very close. But will that actually help? More fuel yeah. for my fire. I'm on two on top of that before it does any difference. Hunting, they're slipping around looking for him too. They find a ward that was placed outside instantly. And get close to Borneo. His level 25. If Roshan is up. They have courier scouting it. But as we say, mud golems can uh, they, they can take their time. Here. Yep. It's not necessarily going to get any harder for them as the moments pass. I mean, sure enough, he's able to start getting farm on their course, but it's not like mud golems are around the map doing nothing. Cleaning up farm. Oh, they're gonna do it. Tips. They're doing it. Skitter, they're moving Skitter the eggs. So he's gonna Ooh. eat someone. They're gonna do the triple toss in, I feel like. They're oh, that's amazing. Right, who are they taking it? Who's going in then? 33? You, you, you're taking 33 into the front lines? Wait, that's not even the Agonims, does it? The life of Agonims is just the buff when you test them. <laughs> that's oh, right, yeah. they moved it to the pudge. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Why are you trying to debate everyone here? <laughs> Debating me. I'm I I made my out of this. I'm trusting you. I forgot I that it shouldn't always bought Ags in so long on this here. Come on, man. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot it's the one where you can rage for your team. It's... Yeah, you get the BKB. Right? They swapped that in the punch one. My bad. Well, that's really good, too, because then he can jump inside the Lina and pop rage, too. And you've seen him do a lot of times. Wow, Look, Barney, here you go. Here go. Yeah. With Blood wow. Rage on top, too. Blood Rage, Rage, Shoulder Crack. <laughs> They're losing the base. No, he's going to have to do so. Has fallen. 35,000 gold behind right now. Father getting out the celebratory drums for these final sieges. Oh, he bought he bought more charges. Oh, yeah, he did. He had the drum, actually. He did. I mean, <laughs> those drum charges are going to help speed it up a little bit. But I was a creep in. And uh, again, so I mean, I just don't bridge. Bridge. You just continue to do this. Just jump in the lean up, up to the high ground, hit racks. And then I'll have to go through that nice community. Skid is going to take a turn himself. Took him quite a bit of a hit, but he has the ages, so he's not scared. And he, of course, has the back of his team. Saves of that. Cookie in the tether from Milan. Keeping Skid are fine. Gotta make a move sooner than later, Narvi. Maybe, maybe we're Radiant already too far in the later part of the equation. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Tier four is getting killed by creeps. They just had to sit at the wall here, trying to pop more in here, but with the rage. Just in. He's just gonna turn. Oh, iceberg! Iceberg's oh gonna get taken God. out. He's got a buyback. He's gonna use it straight away. Roger goes down. Dive away from the Phoenix. General's caught off to the side. Skidder's on top of him. Cookie over. Does manage to get the spear, but a scatter blast to the face from Father takes down General. Death for 90. Magons can resume. This is down the middle. There we have it. GG well played. Is, is caught in. Do manage to push it on to the 40th minute again. Uh, but even more uh, of a lead and a uh, beat down here for Buggons this time. 41,000 gold lead at the end of it all. 33 to 11. Just looking pretty good right now, this Buggons squad. And uh, a death.